Hey everyone, Squirm's Ghost here. Thank you for joining me again today in another video, another plot review. Uh, we are back on Wrath Dress, uh, Dress Rua's, uh, plot. Picking up exactly right where we left off. So, once again, to get here, all you need to do is just type warp Wrath Dress, and you can come to where I am at the end of the street where we were exploring at the last episode. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. I should go back and watch the last two episodes. And so this is the third one in this series. Um, it's been a while since the past uh, video, but unfortunately because of work and real life work and stuff, I do my best to make time to record and then some days I'm just too tired, so I do apologize about the video taking a little while to come out. But as always, leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And let's get on into the video. So, make sure I'm holding on to the glowstone. I'm using a different shader today. Today I am using... Of course, I uh, decided to lag. Um, Chocolate Pick version 6 No Shadows Light, which is a shader that doesn't have shadows, that doesn't cast shadows like normal shaders, just uses the regular shadows of Minecraft. So it's not as resource consuming on my computer. I have an older computer, so it runs a lot better, but unfortunately, you have glitches like that that make the windows look shiny. But hey, better performance for maybe something small like that isn't a big deal so what we are going to do is we're going to just go down to the end of this street turn around come back up then walk back down and see what's further down there so coming up onto this first house Colonel Fetters who's actually a user on this server finest cheese he has a finest cheese shop so let's go on in and take a look. Yep. Yeah, this, I like the use of this. Um, of all these blocks that you place down, Drush, great job. Uh, you can definitely tell this is a cheese chop where you just pour in the milk here and wait for it to settle and do its thing and separate and become cheese and you form it over here. And it looks like it's being all ready to be put out right on over here great that looks good i like it and in the back of the shop they have a small garden most uh most houses in did have their own small gardens like you'll even see it now but i know in medieval days they all had like a um community garden like in between like the houses would form a square and in between would be a big huge garden area maybe they'd be separated between each household, but they all have their own gardens here, so this is a plot that actually takes place in the 1600s, mid 1600s. So it's just after medieval times, so now we're in like Victorian era, I believe. But let's go on upstairs and see what's going on up here. So we do have a nice balcony that overlooks the river. And there's a door, yep. Let's go actually go check these other places that I mentioned in the last video that... And they now have doors. I was asking about that, and I thought after maybe a few of them not having doors, maybe that was supposed to be it. Um, but Russ has now added on doors. <laughs> nice job, Russ. Did not mean to... Be a pain in the butt like that, but I just wasn't a hundred percent sure. And if I'm wrong, just correct me in the comments. Um. So yeah, this is a uh, nice bedroom here. I really like it. With a nice view on into town from right over the bridge. Uh, 
and then coming up to the top floor is obviously the children's room but it's a multi-purpose room there's a place to play to put dirty laundry and for storage and a small um box for holding you know, goods and stuff but i can't seem to get up there so i'll just fly up and just take a look at some of the stuff up there but very nice detail here bro and obviously they're literate as it's past medieval time and more people are becoming more literate so let's go right on down on into the next house you know what we won't go down to the end of the street we'll just go bounce back and forth there's just so much to look at and i just want to be able to see it all um but because the plot is so big i have to break it up just for time purposes so this is a very nice sitting area coming on in here. Person obviously has money. Nice. It comes right out on into that back alley over here. And more storage space, maybe small storage space under the stairs and we'll go right on up to the next floor see what's in here use of this um make different furniture that's what i love about conquest is being able to put different blocks in different places and have it make a hundred percent sense but dress is also great at doing that too Alchemy is like. Uh, not as good as a view as the other one, but at least they still have a place to relax outside before going to bed. Have a uh, bathroom in here, too. Coming on up in this here. Oh, nice. I love this window. Uh, we'll have to go outside and take a look at it after. But this window is a carryover from when Conquest was um, merged with Darwin, which is, um, no, not Darwin, Articraft. Darwin, the server we're on. Articraft, the Articraft mod. Um, they use these a lot in the Hobbit homes, and I really like these windows that they have here. And this person obviously does a lot of reading and studying. Maybe some sort of scribe or something in an alcoholic. Since there's uh, wine and bottles and stuff on the ground. But if I'm wrong, Dress, I am sorry. Uh, head on down and take a look at that window from the outside. I believe it's on this side over here. <clears throat> yes, it is. Nice. I do like the details of this house. And normally I, I don't really like flying around, but only because it takes from the immersion of walking around through it because you won't be able to get up there. Not unless if you're an acrobat or something. So let's go on into the next house and see what this is. Uh, this says it is a bow maker. Lord Master Trot Boyer. <coughs> Excuse me. Place where you can come in and place your orders and a workstation here. All the tools they need to be able to cut down the bows and stuff. Wow, I really like the details of this. I know it's more simple of a room, but it looks great. Okay, there we go. Come on in here, come on into a bathroom. 
Now they obviously don't have a toilet, so they have to do the gruesome job of taking it out and getting rid of it. Then coming on into here, we have a small kitchen. Which makes sense now. The pipes that I saw before, like the, um, let the smoke out, chimneys and stuff from the stove, makes more sense since this is a 1600 clock after the medieval times. Getting into the, uh, more advanced stuff. So this is a nice living area. I do like it. The walls are a little warm. As, um, Maybe the economy wasn't as good on them when they're not able to upkeep the house. But it looks great. I do like the detail. It adds a lot of character to it. And from here, if you look right on up there, you can see the castle. We will eventually make it up there, I promise. I will not, not show you guys. Then up here is the bedroom. A very nice bedroom with a huge window great job Dross, I like it I know I'm saying that a lot of these houses are my favorite but each one like never fails to impress me each one is so individual they're all different and it makes it's not like feeling like it's repetitive going like okay here's a kitchen here's this here's that no not on these builds these are great and uh, this is a nice small kitchen that feels a little more darker in here and obviously this is a dining area this place is obviously older an older house and they do have a nice view of the river and of the blacksmith that is over there. There is a um, story behind that blacksmith. Um, Russ's family used to work for a lord in Ireland who they happen to be a blacksmith of the lord of the castle. So this is the tribute that Russ made to his um, great great grandfather. I think that's what he said. It's the Lisnaval blacksmith so that's really cool um i'm gonna ask him for more details again i know he told me about it um when we were one day talking in about castles and stuff and i asked him what inspired him and he told me about that and i already did the recording of this first episode and i had no idea that it actually had a personal meaning to him which is very cool I love stories like that, especially when you bring them into your build. Look, we've already been in this house, right? Yeah. Yep, we did. That was the, uh... Let's go right on back. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it seems darker in here, so we're going right on up to the next floor. I do like the walls on this house. I do like the type of ornate walls that they have. Um, small bathroom. The many blocks of conquest just always never fail to impress on how you can combine them in so many different ways. Go right on up. Here we are at the top floor. Obviously this person likes to gamble. Maybe that's what happened here. They have it like their own little gambling spot where they basically bring in somebody and they're like, if you wanna if you want, I'll bet you this much and maybe that's how they make their money. They're gambling maybe. Because that seems kinda of hidden. It seems like it's supposed to be a secret. At least to me and if if I'm wrong and if I'm making things up, then let me know, but at least that's my interpretation of it. Pretty been in here. Going into this house, which looks a little newer than this, only because of how the stone looks. Coming on into here, we have a small kitchen.
nice small seating area. And a uh, dining area. Nice. And you have to go upstairs through the kitchen to get to the uh, rest of the house. This bedroom they have a bathroom. It's a combined room, so it might actually, yeah. I wouldn't want to be having to smell of that. Not everyone had the luxury of having a um, bathroom separate. I do like the details in these rooms. Dress, great job. Up to the top floor we have. Kids room, probably. You know what I think that is? We'll go back down. We'll go back down and take a look at the bathroom again. Maybe that's like a... Yeah, no, it's definitely a bedroom. Yep. Okay. That's interesting. Different. I'd hate to be woken up with someone going to the bathroom. But... As I said, not everyone had the means to have a bathroom separate. Especially in the 1600s. So this is the Orient Embassy. So the, whoa. The building's huge. So the one of the other reasons that I was talking about back in medieval times, and you see it a lot when going into like Ireland, into England and stuff. I mentioned like on how houses were only given a certain amount of land to be built on. And it also turns out when looking into it also that um, the base floor which you see here was the land allotted from the Lord as I mentioned before. But it would also be the part of the house that is taxable. So if you had like a 24 foot by 24 foot house base even though it would be probably much bigger I'm just giving you an example that's what you'd be taxed on. So what they did was because of congestion and the taxes, if they wanted more square footage of their house, they would build up and over like this and then for each floor to come out even more, like one, like a little bit out. So that's why you'll see that in like medieval houses and, and even you'll st even still see them now in the houses in old towns and cities through medieval Europe. Alright, coming on in here, as this is the embassy, this is obviously the sitting room. A very nice waiting room. Small kitchen. And I don't know where this is leading. Downstairs, maybe something secretive is down here. Wine shelf. Ooh. Some people in my family would love that cellar. And then we'll go right on upstairs. See what's up here. So this is obviously an office. Not sure if it's probably like a clerk or something where they first come on in and you meet with like the clerk. I don't think it would be the ambassador's office. It seems to be too small. This obviously is a dining area where they'd host their um, guests. Go right on up into the next floor. I forgot Conquest had this block. It's the uh, map, lab block, and the old map one. And it is connected texture, so it would look a little different the more you add on to it. We have one big bedroom, nice big fancy bed. Bedroom here. And maybe that was the ambassador's office. It was an embassy. And this must be the servant's room in here. Yeah. And this is the servant's uh, workspace. Someone lives in there. 
And that's the top part of the floor. Yeah. Okay, we already made it to the tip of the top. Head right on down. I do like the build. Yeah, we went into here. I'm just getting lost. And... So Going down this way. Okay. Cool. Exit. And I do like that building. Very nice. The shipwright. Cat code. Obviously this is a shipmonger. Ooh, it's very dark down here. If you guys can't see, I do apologize. Um, ran into some sort of secret. Some sort of torture chamber. I don't know if that's the right painting if I'm supposed to see that. Okay, I remember Drust telling me about this uh, hidden thing in here. And we just stumbled upon it. I'm just waiting to see if there's any other surprises too that we need to, that we'll find that maybe besides a um, torture chamber. Uh, they have a dirty toilet. Haven't been cleaned for a while. Okay. I remember this. Even Brandy. Yep. Also have a burlesque club. So this is uh, YouTubers, uh, if you're part of the Darwin server, this is obviously where you go for Darwin After Dark. Uh, yep. So... There's Burlesque Club. Very decorated. So obviously if you get on their bad side, they turn you into... Brandy. So that's what they're doing all the way down there. Yep, I remember this place now. So let's head on and into the next house. Small, nice kitchen. Up oh, there's the way up. Let's go see what's in here. Feeding area. I really like this one. That's a nice big fireplace. And a nice porch off the back that goes over that can look at the stables. Just the detail of everything. Um, I forgot if um, Drush did all the interiors or if the interiors with the names on it, like the other users, like Colonel Fetters, uh, Cheese, if Colonel Fetters did that or. If he didn't just gave him homage, I forgot. So if you want to let me know in the comments, Russ, let me know. Then coming on into here, we have a nice bedroom. I like it a lot. Into the top floor, we have a mouse in the house. As well as a study area. Great job. I do feel there should be a um, window there. Get this out, look right. I looked over the river. But very good nonetheless. I do feel that there should be a little way to let in a uh, natural light. Oh, okay. I see why. It's, um, yep. No window there. So coming on into here, we have this sandstone brick house coming in is the kitchen. 
Okay, the curtain is a beginning section. Beginning room. The detail of the uh, feelings and everything. I know I'm looking at everything and I just mentioned the feeling, but Russ always does a good job in his build. As you guys can tell from the last few episodes. As I said before, whoops, I'm stuck. There we go. As I said before in the last few episodes, it just never ceases to amaze me what he can build. This looks awesome. Great job. Go right on down and out. And right here we have the Geeky Gamer's Fruits and Vegetables. I wonder where Sir Geeky Gamer lives. If he has his own house or if he's just a vendor coming into town. I do like this uh, vegetable stand, vegetable cart. Obviously the notice board. Which you can actually get these paintings if you just type warp player head on the server. You can go and get any of these paintings that you see on the bottom. And on the top right here is actually paintings that are supplied by the overlays and the resource pack. Going up this way leads towards up towards the castle, so we're going to go this opposite way. Trips Carpenter. Trips Carpenter, and... Can't really read that. I'm sorry, Josh, just can't really read that. Um, the first, before we go in there, let's see what's out back over here. Oh, did we go in here? This is a nice side street that we come down to with another house that would have been hidden away. Let's see what's in here. Nice little pantry storage area. Oh, I like the, the use of this as a window right here. Small bedroom. So this person obviously doesn't have a lot of money. But they do have a house of their own. Yes. I do approve. Great job. I do like the details. Keep getting stuck on blocks. So much to look at. We'll go on out and head on into that ship's uh, Chips and Carpenter. Kitchen. Feeding area, nice. Bedroom, and probably a bathroom in here, yep. Bathroom laundry room where they do their laundry and hang up this stuff. This floor. We have a very nice. This is almost like a little clubhouse, maybe, like a little meeting house. Maybe it's like a. Um, the old house. Maybe that's what this is. I do like it. I feel like this is where people come in to socialize and meet, maybe share maps and talk about events and stuff. And I might be wrong, but that's what I take from this. I do like it. Great job, Dress. Get out. Where? And here's the workspace. 
I was wondering, I was like, okay, that says it was a, um, carpenter. Here it is. Oh, black. This must be the apprentice's house. They have their own little small room. Nice. Back door, they have a storage area for wood. And yeah, a little nice backyard. I do like it. So here, what we have is the Masonic Lodge. Oh, I only know that because of the symbols and the lodge number. So, we will go take a look at that. We have a place to store your coats. Come on into the eating hall. Looks very nice. I approve. A small kitchen for the clubhouse. And I know if, if I disappear because I say the Masonic Lodge is a clubhouse, then you know what happened. Way up to this way. And unfortunately, we do have that problem with the shaders, which makes glass look like that, but that's overlooked with being able to run a lot better. And we are in the Masonic meeting hall. I know nothing about the Masons except that they have. The old master here, and that's probably not even saying it right, but they'd be here. And each one of these points in a direction on a compass. Starting with the old masons from... I know they started back in the, uh, like in the Temple of David and stuff like that, but they can trace their history back to there, but other than that, I don't really know that much about it. up here they have their pub so I know where I'm going so if anyone wants to find me on the server I'll be right here hanging out right in here passing out the drinks come say hi so this looks amazing Gus great job I love the details of this building and you made it look Legit, at least to me. At least it looks legit and great to me. So here we have St. Mary's Church. I wonder if it is based on an actual church that's near to us or something. Uh, or what it is based after. Not really 100% certain. We'll go in after. And we have the rectory. I want to visit the rectory first. I want to see where the priests live first before we go into the church. So I hope you guys don't mind. Because I want to finish the episode going into the church and into the graveyard after. Um, so in the rectory we have a small simple kitchen. Small eating area. Looks very nice. So if you don't know what a rectory is, it's where the priest lives. Not really sure if not really sure if everyone knows that, but if you don't, that's where they live. This is obviously where the priests sit and write their sermons. Now Druss, I'm not a hundred percent sure if most likely maybe a Catholic, maybe that's uh, why we have rectories and stuff. Or I'm not even sure what Protestants they have rectories at their churches, but I know I'm Roman Catholic and there's a rectory at my church that I go to. Um, so this is this bedroom for the priest. I keep getting stuck on the chairs and stuff. And going right on up, we are on the top floor. Small bathroom. So these must be for like the uh, brothers or something of the church. 
And this must be, yeah, small. I don't want to say drinking area. I'm not really sure how to put that there. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, we definitely did go in there and let's go on out. Take a look at the church and then the graveyard. So, the graveyard's that way, I remember that. And... I'm gonna go right on into St. Mary's Church, right on this way. I wanna take a look at it from this direction. You can see the, um... Stable from here. And there's a duck ducking around. Duck acting like a duck. So yeah, this looks like a great church and carrier. Yeah, this is definitely in the 1600s because back in medieval times, if you... It's a great example of it is um, if you play Kingdom Come Deliverance and you're doing a um, quest in a church, in the uh, medieval times, like early to mid medieval times, they didn't have pews. People would just go in and stand and listen to the church up on the pulpit talking. Or not the church, the priest up on the pulpit talking, giving a sermon. And I do like the details of this church. Very nice dress. The altar boys would sit here. The priest would walk up here and go. I don't know. I'm not a priest. How <laughs> would I know what they would say? <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've been at church, and of course the altar is here. Quite a view. I do like the details in here. Very nice. Let's see what these other rooms are there. I'm not 100% certain. Small bathroom. Oh, not a downstairs, but downstairs. Go up first. I want to go up. The bedroom, probably for the person who upkeeps the church, because the rest of is for the priest himself. This might be like the helper or something. Uh, probably whoever has to ring the bell every hour. I would not like to have that job. I think they ring the bell and keeping time. They probably would do it on shift and stuff. Yep. And of course dress has the most uh, realistic mechanisms and I don't even know how to do mechanisms myself. Up. Very top. We have a great view of what's rendered in of the castle, and we'll be going there soon. I think in maybe two episodes from now, we'll be there. Go right on down, hopefully not fall. Oh, no, of course I fall. Probably broke a leg doing that. on down where we saw that stairwell down. Probably like an undercroft or something. Yep. Burial area for the more important people of the town probably. I don't know if it would be for the Lord because most likely up in the castle there would be their own um, church and stuff where they would be buried. Not sure, but let me know, Dross. Let me know if the Lord's are buried here or if um, this is just more for priests. Like, I know some churches, they have burial plots under the church for priests. Um, there is one church where in town where I live. Um, I live in Massachusetts in an old fishing town and we have like a really old church that I used to go to. They'd have 
like in their hall they have like after school I'd go do like boy scout stuff sometimes and one time they showed us down into their undercroft and stuff it wasn't very much it was more like a basement and stuff but then they opened up this little vault and there were like tombs of the priests underneath there so it's very eerie so I'm just not sure if that's what that is where the priests are buried there or if um or if it's like special people in town like the more um notable people in town so we're going back around past the rectory to the graveyard i want to go in this way only because i feel like this is the way we're supposed to go i was supposed to see it so coming on in here we have multiple different graves in different states and we have a grave waiting for someone to be buried in. Russ did tell me a little bit that this grave was for somebody who got convicted of whatever crime and was hanging up at the Tower of Justice, which we'll see in the next episode. And so they're being, so they're gonna be buried here. And we also have a mausoleum as well. Here lies Gruss the Legend, often known as Captain of the Axe, the Silver Slayer and Death Walker, Savior of Skellen Pass, Hero of the Drenai, and Tomb here within the Axe Naga. Alright, that looks great. I like it. I do not want to disturb Gruss in his eternal slumber. So yeah, guys, I do appreciate you joining me again on another video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a comment. Let me know how you enjoy the series and subscribe. I'm also thinking about maybe starting up another 7 Days to Die series or maybe some other games as well. I'd like a little bit more variety. And if anyone plays Phasmophobia and maybe wants to do some videos there and join in, let me know. Or even if you want to show me a plot and show me around, I do have Discord and, I, and you can explain your plot a lot better than I can. But I'm enjoying this plot that uh, that Russ had made. I'm sorry, I just had a moment um, that Dress had made here and as I said before leave a like let me know that you've enjoyed the video leave a comment for any su suggestions or feedback or if you'd like your plot viewed in the future and subscribe if you haven't already so then you see more notifications and I try to get videos out as fast as possible with work it's been hard but I am trying until the next one, thank you for joining me. Bye, guys.